feel like a parent here. How many times do I have to tell you, please don't put your hand on the hot stove. Look, ow. <laughs> ow. <laughs> ah, <laughs> you've done it four years in a row. You Republicans who are likely going to lose, and you know who you are. I mean, we could do romper room and I could hold up a mirror and talk about, I can see you, Martha. I can see you, Corey. Tommy, I see little Tommy in North Carolina. I see Susan in Maine. Joni, how you doing, Joni? How's it going out there? Wow, that man has been broken by Donald Trump. Just look at that panel. A few of them seem genuinely baffled as to what the hell is happening. How much gaslighting can one person dish out? I mean, really, lecturing others about credibility and being a presidential sycophant on a network that was and continues to be Democrat Party Barack Obama sycophants. Well, ironically, all but Joe himself, who was one of the few critics of Barack Obama on MSNBC, during his administration. But now he's the one that has to flip on a Republican president. That's the way it always goes. The media has lots of Republicans whose job it is to bash other Republicans or to just switch sides, but you'll never see a Democrat counterpart. Something big happened last night. Yeah. A conservative won a Pulitzer Prize. It just never happens with us on the phone right now. Pulitzer Prize winner Kathleen Parker. She heard us, heard us talking about her. Yay. Her ears were burning. And Kathleen, I'm sure the entire right wing of American politics is going to hoist you on their shoulders now because you won a Pulitzer Prize. How exciting. I don't, I don't think it's going that way, Joe. <laughs> I don't <laughs> think so. Uh, you know, it, it's only because uh, I'm a, a conservative basher that I'm now recognized after 23 years of toiling in the fields, right? Well, I still remember the smackdown that Joe Lieberman got from Democrats and the media when he sided with Republicans and endorsed John McCain for president. We'll watch the whole clip, and trust me, you want to see it because Joe Scarborough tells a whopper of a lie at the end. But first, just give me 30 seconds for a quick capitalism break from this episode sponsor noble gold you know life has never looked so uncertain as it does right now across the u.s people are being paralyzed into indecision humming and hawing about everything feeling flustered and ultimately shutting down avoiding that issue the money one but as bleak as it might look there may be a silver or even gold lining if you worked for a company for years before covid came around and you were let go you might have left some treasure behind. Your old 401k or IRA could be worth thousands, and it's still working for your old firm, not you. So if you're a bit uncertain about what the future holds right now, you should call the team at Noble Gold at 1-877-646-5347. And if that's not incentive enough, with each qualifying IRA, you'll get a solid silver five ounce Apollo 11 coin free. So it's worth jumping on the phone and calling 877-646-5347 now. That's 877-646-5347. I mean, we could do romper room and I could hold up a mirror and talk about, I can see you, Martha. I can see you, Corey. Tommy, I see little Tommy in North Carolina. I see Susan in Maine. Joni, how you doing, Joni? How's it going out there? I mean, you had a great reputation before you got into Congress. You had a great reputation before you became an apologist for Donald Trump. Romper room? That's a really weird dated reference. Okay, so obviously this type of an appeal is transparently partisan and obviously theatrical for the purposes of propaganda, but it's also just brazenly hypocritical. I mean, look at this panel and on a network like MSNBC where every single one of them is a left-wing DNC lackey. All of them sycophants and lacking any credibility. Not to mention that Scarborough and Brzezinski were actually quite fond of Donald Trump before he became a thorn in the side of Democrats. And I'm guessing that's where this kabuki theater like this is coming from. It's Joe and Mika's attempt to rewrite history and win back the favor of their small audience of communists and Marxists. Do you really want to leave public service 
being remembered as nothing but a sycophant for a man who can't even condemn white nationalism because that will hang over you all of you for the rest of your lives there is no wringing of your hands susan and saying it was terrible on both sides you really actually have to speak out against this oh my god he said it he's in boys he did it he said it why is this okay why is it not against the law for the supposed free press to just blatantly lie about a sitting u.s president not only has trump condemned white supremacists neo-nazis white nationalists and all those guys he's done it something like 20 times over the last four years now i know i posted these clips several times over the last few days but what else can i do our supposedly trustworthy the free press keeps lying about it over and over again. Obviously knowing that repeating it over and over will lead to millions of Americans believing it. David Duke is a bad person who I disavowed on numerous occasions over the years. When Chris joined, we had a news conference and they asked me the exact same question. I said, I disavowed. I disavowed then. I disavowed today on ABC with George Stephanopoulos. I disavowed again. You, I'm not looking to repudiate David Duke. Sure. Uh, David Duke and robocalls are out again and the white supremacist movement supporting you. Uh, do you have any know. words for that? Well, I disavow. David Duke endorsed me? Okay. All right. I disavow, okay? When we looked at it and looked at the question, I disavowed David Duke. So I disavowed David Duke all weekend long on Facebook, on Twitter, and mm -hmm. obviously it's never enough. Mm -hmm. So are you prepared right now to make a clear and unequivocal statement renouncing the support of all white supremacists? Of course I am. He has yet once to condemn white supremacy. The neo-Nazis. He hasn't condemned the darn thing. person wants to be the nominee of the Republican Party. There can be no evasion and no games. They must reject any group or cause that is built on bigotry. He was talking about you. But I've rejected. How many times do I have to reject? I've rejected David Duke, rejected David Duke. Uh, I've rejected the uh, KKK, the Ku Klux Klan. White supremacists are saying, vote. do you want those votes? No, I don't want them, and I don't want him to say it. And yeah, you I want the supporters. No, I don't want anything. I, I, what do you think of white supremacists, by the way? I don't like any group of hate. David Duke announced his Senate candidacy, claiming your agenda. Are you ready before you ask the question? Newt Gingrich said, every Republican should repudiate this guy, I no did. matter what it takes. And I do. Rebuked. Is that okay? Rebuke. Rebuke. Done. Done. You see, he's done it over and over again, and yet the media just keeps pretending like it never happened. It's just another glaring example of how utterly corrupted our media has become. It was totally predictable, and I foresee things getting even crazier the closer we get to this election. That's all I have for this episode. Please hit that like button, share, and subscribe. If you'd like to support this channel, you can do so using the links in the description or in the pinned comment. Thanks for watching. Keep coming back.